So in my last video I talked about where the meta is currently with a good spread of aggro, mid-range and control. And near the end of the video I said I'd be taking Bobby Yellow to my local game store championship. As I felt it had a good matchup into aggro, which I expected to see a lot of. And I felt as a relatively aggressive tempo deck it would be able to hold its own against the new wave of blue control lists. Which I expected to see as well, but maybe not as much as the aggro decks. So my one worry with bringing this deck to a tournament was, was coming up against my worst matchup. Bobber Green. So there are a few reasons the matchup is so bad. The Bobber Green player has access to ramp and is able to get their leader out a turn early. They have access to ECL and Steadfast Battalion, which means they can easily remove your leader from the game. And they have a stronger late game, which means if you don't blast them down quickly enough, they'll just overwhelm you in the end. So I was worried about Bobber Green, and I was also worried about other mid-range decks. I don't have much testing against decks like Han or Chirrut, but I did feel a bit more confident about those decks because of my ability to bounce and exhaust so much with Cunning. The reason I still felt confident taking Bobber Yellow into this tournament was because I didn't expect to see much mid-range at all. I felt that people were going to be scared of the new control decks and they were going to roll aggro instead. Well it turns out my meta read in terms of taking Bobber Yellow was spot on, as I was able to win the whole thing. But I was wrong about the spread of decks that would be at the event. It turns out there was a near even split of aggro, mid-range and control. And that was reflected in my matchups, which were as follows. Sabine Cunning, Iden Aggression, Sabine Command, Bobber Command. Now before I go into some tips and advice for competitive play and how to do better at tournaments, Let's just quickly go through my matchups and discuss what happened in each one, from what I can remember at least. So my first match was against Yellow Sabine or Sabine Cunning, which I won 2-0. Now I'll start by saying that this deck, Bobber Yellow, is designed to beat aggro decks. I think into decks like Sabine and Leia, if you pilot this deck correctly, we have something stupid like a 70% chance of winning, and it might even be more than that to be honest. And with that said, I hadn't actually played against Cunning Sabine before, so this was a new experience for me. From what I can remember of the game, which isn't much actually, it played out mostly like my testing against Sabine Green. We both played down early game units, uh, he played down A-Wing, I played down 7th Fleet Defender. He wing lidded his A-Wing and put Metal Ceremony onto it. And then at 4 resources I used Cunning to bounce it back to his hand and gave my 7th Fleet Defender plus 4 attack. I was able to run Syndicate Lackey straight into Sabine, and once I played down Gamorian Guards he never really fully recovered from that point. So. This one was, I, I don't remember a huge amount about this game, two very similar games, uh, both very one-sided um, that I'm struggling to fully recall to be honest, but it played out much like I expected the aggro matchup to play out. My next matchup was against Aiden Aggression, or Aiden Red, which I won 2-1. So despite what I said earlier about feeling okay about the control matchups as an aggressive deck, I was still quite nervous going into this one. I knew it was going to be a slog, and unlike Leia and Sabine, my deck is mostly unable to throw down two to three units a turn, which means it can be hard to get much damage in the early rounds. And this was kind of how it played out in the first game. I played things down, he played single target removal, and we went pretty much one for one. That is until the mid game. And then I was able to start playing down two units a turn, and with Bobber's ability and waylay and bouncing his sentinels, I was some sometimes able to get down three. So it happened slowly, but over the course of the game I was able to get more and more damage in on him over time. Attacking first thing, and using surprise strikes before he eventually played down super laser blast which removed my entire board but by that point he was on about 25 26 health i think and i was able to reload with fetz fire spray into a, another fetz fire spray after he removed it and i won the game game two was much more difficult for me he hit the perfect bombing run into my ground arena when i had four things three of them died in one hit and the bobber leader was left with four health it was an open deck list for the tournament and I hadn't seen that card yet so it kind of came out of nowhere for me. After that I wasn't really able to recover and he was able to eventually play down an Avenger which just ruined me basically. I was holding Cantina Bouncer and Waylay in my hand so I could have potentially at that point dragged the game out by bouncing it back to his hand and forcing him to replay it over and over. But I realised that at that point I hadn't, I hadn't got enough damage in on his base and we were running behind on time. So I decided to fold that match on, I think it was can't remember what turn it was but uh, it wasn't too late and I thought I'd try and go for the win in game three instead and it turned out to be the right decision. Game three went how I kind of had planned the matchup to go. I managed to play Bodhi Rook on three, I removed his bombing run and then with that out of the way I played lots of small things and then I used Cunning to hit for four and I discarded a card from his hand which was Super Laser Blast and then Surprise Strikes sealed the game for me. My next matchup was Sabine Command which I won 2-0. 
this was a lot like the first game, except I think my opponent was maybe a bit better in this game as we were both 2-0 by that point. Although having said that, in the first game I think he overcommitted on an A-wing. He played a wing leader into it and double, mer double medal ceremonied, which I then just waylaid it, which I think was absolutely killer for him. I don't think he was able to recover from that. He also, I think he misplayed because he used ECR with K2SO, which I then just bounced with Cunning, which I think was the wrong play. Once the, um, once the Sabine decks have used ECL and you bounce whatever they played, their deck just becomes too slow. The tempo loss is huge and it's difficult for, to recover from for them. Cunning is just absolutely ruinous for these decks because even if you don't use the damage, you just bounce one thing and exhaust two and there's not much they can do about it. It just, the whole turn it's gone, essentially. Another thing I noticed was that as an aggressive high out damage output deck myself, these decks that have 25 health bases have a really hard time keeping up you can't race a deck that has 30 health with a 25 health base and my deck has a lot of cards that are essentially two for ones so cards like cantina bouncer so play down cantina bouncer remove something of theirs say steadfast battalion and put your own threat on the board so yeah these decks just can't keep up with this and then my last matchup so my final game the game to win the tournament and it turned out to be against bobber green which i ended up winning 2-1 but I lost the first game of the round as well, so I was obviously at that point very nervous. My opponent was able, in the first game, my opponent was able to ramp into his leader and was able to get a lot of value out of Bosk, pinging my units away. Um, and with overwhelming Barrage, he cleared my board before deploying Relentless, which he was running in the main deck, funnily enough, uh, which I just couldn't come back from. In game two, it played out much differently. I ripped resupply from his hand with Bodhi Rook, and I managed to get my leader out on the same turn as his. I was able to no good to me dead his bobber, and I had several small units out which he was able to overwhelm a barrage, but I didn't deal with my 7th fleet defender due to the shield, so I was able to keep swinging 3 every turn while I bounced his stuff. He played down Vader in the ground arena, but I just bounced it and ignored the small unit, whacking him from space with surprise strikes and cunning to seal the game in the end. In game 3 I now knew his weakness, shields and space, so I hard mulligan for 7th fleet defenders, and I protected the absolute shit out of them. Every time he played something into space, I bounced it, with waylay, cunning, cantina bouncer, I didn't let him have anything in that arena, and I was able to play a couple of cartel spacers and 7th fleet defenders before playing down Fett's fire spray to finish the game off. So with that all out of the way, let's discuss the deck and why it's a good choice in the current meta, and my tips to win with the deck. After game 1 of the final round, my opponent asked me why I was playing Cunning and not Command, Boba Fett, and I think I didn't get a chance to explain to him at the end because I, I think after losing he didn't really want to talk to me, but I think it boils down to one word, focus. This deck, Boba Yellow, Boba Cunning, whatever you want to call it, has a clear game plan with cards that all come together and synergize that game plan into an action. It's tempo. I think in a game like Star Wars Unlimited where you have very limited resources and things cost quite a lot, having tempo is huge. If someone pays six resources to play something down and then you bounce it and play your own thing with either Cunning or Cantina Bouncer, it's, it, it's actually very powerful because they've just wasted their entire turn. It's kind of like time walking someone, if you know what I mean by that. It's also an extremely flexible deck. Against aggro decks, you can completely out-tempo them, bouncing and exhausting their things whilst deploying your own. But against control, you can kind of assume the role of the aggressive player by playing down a few small things, um, each of which become a threat because of the events that we run, like surprise, strike, and cunning. So I think it's really well suited against the current meta. It, it's obviously its worst matchup is against mid-range, but even then, you can still, as I showed against Bubble Green, you can you can out-tempo and out-aggro them, So especially if they're running a 25 health base. So overall, I think it was a really good choice into the meta as it stands right now. It might not be in the future, but I'm, I'm looking forward to set two and seeing if they release any more double yellow cards because I'd love to improve this deck and, and see it get better. So now I'm just going to go through my top five things that I learned from the tournament and tips that I can give you to improve your competitive play. Number one, know when to commit and when to hold back. By commit, I mean both units and resources. You need to know when to hold back on playing your units, which is quite obvious, I think, but not everybody does it. For example, if you're the aggressive player and you suspect your opponent is holding onto mass removal, don't play all of your things down on one turn. Play one or two things, which kind of puts them in an awkward position. If they, if you only play one or two things a turn and they're holding on to Super Laser Blast, they'll think twice before using it because they might feel like it's a waste to just play an eight resource removal to remove two things. You also need to think very carefully whether your decision is to resource or not. I think a lot of players think that you should just resource every turn because it's a key part of the game, right? Actually, I don't think that's the case. I'll give you an example. 
Against the Iden Red player, for a number of turns, I stopped resourcing at five resources because of what I was holding in my hand. I only had cheap stuff like Crafty Smuggler, Cartel Spacer, that kind of thing. Instead of dropping one of those down to get to six resources, I knew it was going to be more important to be playing two things a turn and having more stuff in my hand than to increase my resources for future turns. So on the turn that I did eventually draw Fett's Fire Spray, then I resourced something small to be able to pay for that. That actually paid off in that matchup. I also did that sometimes against Bubba Fett Green as well, so it's not always a clear-cut decision just to resource every turn. I think you have to think about the game state, think about your hand, what you're going to be drawing, what you're going to be playing, and then if you need to resource to get more things onto the board, then do that. But if that's going to run you out of resources, um, excuse the pun, then you shouldn't do it every turn. Number two, know how and when to arena dodge. So this one is more for the aggro players out there. You need to learn to arena dodge your opponent. What do I mean by that? I mean you need to play down things into the arena where your opponent has the fewest resources or means to deal with your stuff. So throughout the game you're going to be drawing lots of different units and you're going to have lots of decisions to make when it comes to resourcing those cards. So think carefully about whether to resource ground units or space units. Think about what your opponent is playing, where they're going to be playing their things. So for example against these blue control decks they have uh, Childson in the ground arena and quite a lot of them are hard mulliganing for Childson. So it makes more sense to play things down into the space arena. Okay, they do have things like system patrol craft, but that we know what that's going to be. That's going to be a 3-4. We don't know what Charleston's going to be. He might be a 6-6, for all we know. And a good example of this was in my game against Bobber Green, as I mentioned earlier. I was the aggressor. I knew he lacked a solid space presence after the first game. He had a lot of ambush potential on the ground, but he couldn't react in space. And so I went hard on space in my second two games, and it won me that match. Number three, know when to call it quits and when to fold. So this one's really important, mostly in a tournament setting. If you're playing against a slow deck and you see yourself in a situation that you think is unwinnable, fold the game, go into the next one, just forget about that one. Otherwise you risk running out of time, and which, in which case it's an auto loss for both of you. There's obviously a balance to be struck here because you don't want to be quitting early when you might be able to turn it around. But equally there are situations in the mid game against control decks that it's just going to be too difficult to come back from. So it's about making a judgement. Can I come back from this? Is there a line to victory? If you think there isn't, then it's worth it giving that game up just to try and win the next game. If your opponent doesn't have much life left and you just need a few things to stick, then I would go for it. But if it's 10-5 or 6 and your opponent has 20 health left and you have nothing on the board, it might be time to call it and go to the next one because your late, your late game is not going to be able to stack up against you know, Avengers and Devastators and things like that. So this happened to me in the Iden Red game, as I mentioned earlier, and it ended up working out for me. I folded the second game and then I went on to win the third game. So it won't always work, but it gave me a chance to get through in the tournament. Number four, know when to attack base and when to trade. I've talked about this one before and there's a lot of information out there about this subject. Articles about who's the beatdown and things like that. But this is obviously a very important part of TCGs and a very important part of Star Wars Unlimited. Unless you're playing pure aggro, then this will vary on a case by case basis and a game by game basis. Even if you are pure aggro, if you're playing in a mirror match, it's one of you is going to be the beatdown and one of you is going to be the control. And that's going to vary based on the board state, what's in your hand, and how much damage is on each base. So you need to identify in each matchup, and at each stage of that matchup, what your role is at that point in the game. So against Sabine, for example, in both games, in the early game, I was not the beatdown, I was not attacking base. I was trading efficiently, I was bouncing their units, and then only in the mid game when I started to take over control of the game, that's when I started to go for base. Whereas against Bob Green, for example, I knew I was the aggressor. I had to be. He had 25 health base, I had a 30 health base. I had to play as aggressively as possible, I had to go for his base as much as possible, but whilst, obviously with this deck, the, the great thing about this deck is that you can do that whilst removing their things. So that's why it's such a strong tempo deck, because you can still, with Cunning, for example, you can bounce something and do 4 damage. With Cantina Bouncer, you can bounce something and put a threat into play. And lastly, uh, number five, know your local meta and try to counter it. So this one's obviously not always possible if you're going into a tournament and you don't know the people that are going to be playing in this tournament, if there's no open deck lists, that kind of thing. But you will, if you go to your local game store you know, fairly frequently, you'll have an idea of what people like to play. I know that people in my area like to play aggro decks. They have since the beginning, and I knew that a lot of people were going to be on that. And 50% of my matchups were against aggro decks, so... I was kind of right in bringing this deck. So pick a deck that counters what people are playing in your area. If everybody's playing control, play aggro. If everybody's playing mid-range, play control. If everybody's playing aggro, play mid-range, that kind of thing. It's, you know, 
relatively straightforward. It's not going to work all the time because sometimes you'll be drawn against your worst matchup. But in those cases, then you need to use your sideboard and, you know, use all of your knowledge of the game to try and make a bad matchup a win like I did in the last game. So, yeah. Anyway, that's all of my tips and that's my rundown of uh, my store championship. Thanks for listening. Look out for a new video in the next week or so.